Many years ago, my son Brian decided he wanted to learn a martial art. He wanted to learn judo. And fortunately, where I worked at the university, we had a professor in the Department of Psychology who was also a world-class judo instructor. His name was Dr. Sashio Ishida. So Brian went to his first class, and he spent the entire class falling. He fell forward, he fell backward, he fell to the left, he fell to the right. This went on for a long time, and he was exhausted. And he went to Dr. Ishida, and he said, Dr. Ishida, I don't think falling is a good thing in judo. Why am I practicing falling? And Dr. Ishida looked at him and he said, Brian, you must fall 1,000 times. But you must get up 1,001 times. I'm not teaching you just to fall. I'm teaching you to get up. Failure. I've had modest successes in my life, and I'm proud of them. But I've also had a lot of failure. I left the monastery where I was studying to be a priest, Mount Carmel. I flunked out of college. I ran for a political office twice and was defeated both times. I was divorced. I could go on for 18 minutes talking about my failures, but I'm not going to. I'm going to talk about five gifts that failure gave me. And I'm also going to talk about something around failure that we have to be very wary of and concerned about, and I'll give you a hint. It's not failure itself. The first gift we get from failure, and believe me, everyone in this room, if you haven't already suffered a serious failure, you will sometime in your life, learns the gift of humility. When things are going well, for me anyway, I think I'm the belly button of the world. I'm Pope Eximli. The world revolves around me. I know everything. But with failure, suddenly, I become a right-sized person. All of my arrogance, all of my foolish pride, all of my self-centeredness is stripped away. And I become a normal person. Not only do I become a normal person, but I look at the world around me and I realize it doesn't revolve around me. It's not all about me. The writer Aeneas Nin said, we don't see things the way they are. We see things the way we are. And that's true, and we learn that through humility. It's one of these gifts of failure. The second gift of failure is this. John F. Kennedy said, success has a hundred fathers. Failure is an orphan. And he was right. When we fail, we see friends slip away. People we thought we could count on are not there. Things we thought we could count on are gone. It's very disappointing. The good side is, People we didn't know were our friends. People we didn't know we could count on showed up and helped us. And we saw things of where we could count on things, where we couldn't count on things. And a cleansing took place. We got rid of the things that were deleterious to us, that hurt us, and we held on close to those things, those values, those people that made us better. We went through a cleansing. We went through an inventory. And failure gave us that gift. The third gift we're given is a gift of resilience. Resilience, Thomas Edison took 700 experiments before he invented the light bulb. And his friends said to him, Thomas, you failed 700 times. And he said, no, I never failed. I just discovered 700 ways that didn't work. Henry Ford went bankrupt before he founded Ford Motors. Abraham Lincoln, the president, lost every election of his life, eight elections, before he won his first election, and that was as president of the United States. The Beatles 
were fired from Decca Records. They were told guitar music will never make it anymore. And from my home state, Tennessee, Elvis Presley, his first paid gig, the fellow paid him and said, go back to driving a truck. You'll never make it in the music business. Resilience, getting up that thousand and first time is resilience. The next area where we have a gift is a gift of focus, is a gift of looking at where we are and where we're going to go and getting a focus. Samuel Johnson said, nothing focuses the mind like an impending hanging. Well, failure isn't quite like getting hung. Failure is rarely fatal. But it is something that focuses the mind. Steve Jobs, the founder of Apple, had the misfortune of being fired from the company he founded at age 30. He talked to a group of graduates at Stanford University, and he had this to say about his failure. He said he saw it, getting fired from Apple is the best thing that ever happened to him. It took the heaviness of being a success to the beginner stage of being a failure. And it was through that he entered into the most creative period of his life. And it was a creative period, we all know that, because he came back to Apple and he made the iPhone, for better or for worse. So we have, we have focus as another. And the final gift I want to talk about is the gift of transformation. If we go through humility, if we go through cleansing, if we go through resilience and focus, we become transformed. The picture that you see of the phoenix, the famous mythical bird that rose from its own ashes, from the fire it was burned in, to become a beautiful being. As human beings, we don't burn and have the ashes, but the fire that causes transformation for us is rarely success. It's much more often failure. It's failure that gives us the ability to transform to do something else. Michael Jordan, the great basketball player, was cut from his junior varsity high school team. He went home, he cried. He was, he was humbled. He was cleansed. And he was resilient. And he worked, and he became a great high school basketball star. He became a great college basketball star. He became a great NBA basketball star, maybe the greatest player who ever lived. He was transformed. There's a prestigious university in the United States did a study, and they called in a group of seniors who were about to graduate, successful people, and it said to them, do a short essay. Talk about how you were transformed, a moment in your life that changed you, that you could say, this is what made me what I am today. More than 70% of these students cited a failure. They didn't cite successes. It was failure. Failure that gave you insight, knowledge, wisdom was the transforming element in their lives. The trick is never let success go to your head. Never let failure go to your heart and we move on. You know, I've heard military leaders and coaches say, um, failure is not an option. And I, every time I hear that, I wonder and say, if failure isn't an option, why bother? What's the point? If success is so easy, if there's no meaning to success, why, what is success without the possibility of failure? What does it mean? You know, those are the five gifts I got from failure. But there was something else, and it's not a good thing. Success is a goal, a prize to be won. Failure is that journey we take on the goal. But there's something else that we have to worry about, and that is this, fear of failure. Fear of failure is a decision not to go on the journey. 
fear of failure is the decision to sit still. I know in my lifetime, I don't regret the things I did. I don't so much regret the things I did badly. I don't really regret the things I did wrong. My biggest regrets in my lifetime are the adventures I didn't go on because of fear of failure, are the things I didn't try because of fear of failure. Those were the things that I regret the most. Fear of failure, a worthy foe. Fear of failure is smart. It knows you. It knows me. Fear of failure comes at you through a friend who says, don't even try. You can't do this. Through a family member who says, well, you always fail. But fear of failure really knows you. It knows how to get you, and it doesn't get you through somebody else. Fear of failure comes to you at 3 o'clock in the morning in your bedroom when you're alone. And fear of failure is a voice that comes from within. It says, you're not worthy. You don't deserve this. You always fail. And it's crippling. How do you fight it? How do you fight this fear of failure? The writer Samuel Beckett said this about fear and failure. Ever tried, ever failed, no matter, try again, fail again, fail better. Let me tell you a story of my life in fear of failure. Ten years ago, I was given my first Fulbright Award and I was sent to Ukraine. And I was very excited about it, and I was getting ready to go to Ukraine. And on my way, I experienced partial blindness. I was driving a car at the time, so it was very scary. And I went to see a doctor, and the doctor started doing tests. And at the end of the day, he came to me and he said, we found a large mass in your brain. We think it's a ganglioblastoma. I'd never heard that word before, so I was very nervous. And he says, and we think it's malignant. I had heard that word before, and I was very nervous. And um, they put me in a hospital room. And believe me, I was humbled. I couldn't see. I was blind. I had a bandage on my head. I'd been told I was dying. I was humbled. And I called my girlfriend, and I said, I've got this terrible thing that happened. And she said, I'll be there. And that night she came to my bed, she gave me a box of Godiva chocolates, gave me a kiss, and I never saw her again for five years. Other friends, so-called friends, went by the wayside. They didn't show up. But I was blessed. Many of my friends came from all over the country to visit me, to help me, to give me strength, to give me courage. Family members came to give me courage. It was a wondrous cleansing, a wondrous cleansing. But I had surgery. I was in a wheelchair. I was blind. I didn't know how to read. I'd have to learn to read again. Um, and suddenly I met fear of failure. Fear of failure was in my room saying, you can't go to Ukraine. You're too old. You're too sick. You're blind. You can't read. The, Russians, the, the Russian winter will be too much. You can't do it. Don't bother. Don't try. But with focus and with the help of family and friends, I worked very hard to rehabilitate. I worked very hard to learn to read again, to walk again, to do the things I had to do to go to Ukraine. And I went. And it was a wonderful experience. It was a transforming experience. I got to experience a great country, a great culture, a great people. And after that, because of this transformation and beating fear of failure, I was able to follow up on that. And I went to Azerbaijan, and I went to Tajikistan, and Kyrgyzstan, and Kazakhstan to teach. Wonderful experience. And then, recently, 
I came to Lithuania, to Estonia, to Latvia, and you by overcoming fear of failure. You know, when I finished my time in Ukraine, I was asked to address the faculty and the students of the Kiev National Linguistic University. And I told them a story, I said, true story. I said, when I went to pick up my tickets in Tennessee to go to Ukraine, the travel agent said, oh, are you going to Ukraine to fall in love? And I said, what? She said, are you going to, oh, 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 old men, they go to Ukraine to fall in love. They meet young Ukrainian women and they get married. And I said, no, I'm not going to fall in love. I'm going there to teach. That's what I'm going to Ukraine for. And um, so I left in a huff. And um, that day in Ukraine, at Kiev National Linguistic University, in front of all the students and all the staff and all the faculty, I said this to them. I was wrong. I fell in love. I fell in love with Ukraine, your beautiful country. I fell in love with the students. I fell in love with the faculty. I fell in love with the staff. I said, there are three kinds of people in this world. The people who make things happen, the people who have things happen to them, and the people who wonder what happened. <laughs> and you, you have to decide what kind of person you're going to be. And I had students come up to me later saying, we're going to be the kind of people who make things happen. Because, in great part, they overcome fear of failure. And that's where they go. In my darkest days, those days where fear of failure came to me in the night, it was very hard. And I relied on a poem by Tennyson. And I kept on reciting this part of the poem. It's about Ulysses, the great warrior king. And the great warrior king who fought the Peloponnesian War that Homer wrote about in the, in the Iliad. And his journey back that's written about in the Odyssey. Great adventures. Only Tennyson writes about Ulysses when he's old. He's the king. He's bored. He wants to go off on another adventure. And his fear of failure says to him, You'll die. You can't get your crew together. This isn't going to work. Don't bother. And in the poem, Ulysses answers him. And this is what he says. Come, my friends. It's not too late to seek a newer world. Push off, and sitting well in order, smite the sounding furrows. For it's my purpose to sail beyond the sunset in the baths of all the western stars until I die. The gulfs may wash us down. It may be we'll touch the happy isles. It may be we'll see the great Achilles, who we knew. Though much is taken, much abides. And though we are not now that strength which in old times moved earth and heaven, what we are, we are. Strong of temper, strong of will, to strive, to seek, to find, and not to yield. Thank you. Now go out and fail better. <laughs>